Section 8. Hybrid Successors Hybrid 3s are designed to research the effects of frontal impacts and are less valuable in assessing the effects of other sorts of impacts, such as side impacts, rear impacts, or rollovers. After head-on collisions, the most common severe injury accident is the side impact. The SID, or Side Impact Dummy, family of test dummies, has been designed to measure rib, spine, and internal organ effects in side collisions. It also assesses spine and rib deceleration and compression of the chest cavity. SID is the U.S. government testing standard. Euro SID is used in Europe to ensure compliance with safety standards, and SID2s represents a 5th percentile female. Bio SID is a more sophisticated version of SID and Euro SID, but is not used in a regulatory capacity. Bio RID is a dummy designed to assess the effects of a rear impact. Its primary purpose is to research whiplash and to aid designers in developing effective head and neck restraints. Bio RID is more sophisticated in its spinal construction than hybrid. 24 vertebra simulators allow Bio RID to assume a much more natural seating posture and to demonstrate the neck movement and configuration seen in rear end collisions. Crabby, C R A B I, is a child dummy used to evaluate the effectiveness of child restraint devices, including seat belts and airbags. There are three models of the Krabby, representing 18 month, 12 month, and 6 month old children. Thor is an advanced 50th percentile male dummy. The successor of Hybrid 3, Thor has a more human like spine and pelvis and its face contains a number of sensors which allow analysis of facial impacts to an accuracy currently unobtainable with other dummies. Thor's range of sensors is also greater in quantity and sensitivity than those of Hybrid 3. Further development is needed on dummies which can address the concern that, even though fewer lives are lost, there are still a hundred seriously injured passengers for every death and crippling injuries to the legs and feet represent the great percentage of resultant physical impairments. Section 9. The Future of the Dummy Crash test dummies have provided invaluable data on how human bodies react in crashes and have contributed greatly to improved vehicle design. While they have saved millions of lives, like cadavers and animals, they have reached a point of reduced data return. The largest problem with acquiring data from cadavers, other than their availability, was that an essential element of standardized testing, repeatability, was impossible. No matter how many elements from a previous test could be reused, the cadaver had to be different each time. While modern test dummies have overcome this problem, testers still face essentially the same problem when it comes to testing the vehicle. A vehicle can be crashed only once. No matter how carefully the test is done, it cannot be repeated exactly. A second problem with dummies is that they are only approximately human. 44 data channels on a hybrid 3 is not even a remote representation of the number of data channels in a living person. The mimicking of internal organs is crude at best, a fact that means that even though cadavers and animals are no longer the primary sources of accident data, they must still be employed in the study of soft tissue injury. The future of crash testing has begun at the same place it was all started, Wayne State University. King H. Yang is one of Wayne State's researchers involved in creating detailed computer models of human systems. Currently, computers are neither fast enough nor programmers skilled enough to create full body simulations, but injury analysis of individual body systems is producing reliable and encouraging results. The advantage of the computer is that it is unbound by physical law. A virtual vehicle crashed once can be uncrashed and then crashed again in a slightly different manner. A virtual back broken can be unbroken, the seatbelt configuration changed, and the back rebroken. When every variable is controllable and every event is repeatable, the need for physical experimentation is greatly reduced. At the beginning of the 21st century, Legal certification of new car models is still required to be done using physical dummies and physical vehicles. 
However, the future is almost certainly one where neither skin and bone nor plastic and steel will determine the shape of vehicles to come. The next generation of crash test dummies will perform their tasks entirely on a computer screen. Section 10. Crash Test Dummies in Popular Culture The humanoid appearance of crash test dummies led to their becoming anthropomorphized. In the 1980s, the U.S. Department of Transportation launched a series of public service announcements in magazines and on TV featuring the antics of two talking crash test dummies named Vince and Larry, who modeled seatbelt safety practices through their slapstick antics. The campaign, with its slogan, You Can Learn a Lot from a Dummy, was very popular, and since then crash test dummy characters remain a common sight in seatbelt safety campaigns, especially those aimed at children. In the early 1990s, Tyco Toys created a line of action figures called the Incredible Crash Dummies, based on the characters from the ads. The colorful toys were intended to fall apart at the touch of a button on their stomachs and could easily be reassembled. Vehicles could also be bought, which could similarly be crashed into walls and broken, and easily put back together. The Incredible Crash Dummies line of toys featured characters such as Slick and Spin, the main duo, and their friends, Daryl, Spare Tire, and Bull. Later on, the villainous junk bots were introduced. The popularity of the toys prompted a one-hour television special, The Adventures of the Incredible Crash Dummies. Unique for its time, the cartoon was produced entirely using 3D computer animation techniques. A comic book series was also produced, as well as a video game for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Rumors say that due to complaints from some parents' groups against the violence inherent in the toys, the series was discontinued. A more likely explanation is that Tyco Toys was dissolved in 2001. In 2004, a series of Crash Dummies animated shorts were commissioned for the Fox Network, thus spawning another series of toys for Mattel through the Hot Wheels brand. The television series Mythbusters employs a crash test dummy for experiments that are too risky for the human hosts to try. Buster has tested, among other things, the dynamics of falling elevators, drops into water, getting a foot stuck in a washing machine, getting shot out of a drainage culvert, improper use of construction equipment, and ancient attempts at space flight. Section 11. See also. Car accident. Car safety. Safety car. Seatbelt Legislation Section 12. References History of Crash Dummies, Link How the Dead Have Helped the Living, Link I Was a Human Crash Test Dummy, Link Harold Mertz, Link The Female Crash Test Dummy, Link She May Not Have a Brain, But She Could Save Your Life The Sierra Sam Story, Link Meet 50th Percentile Hybrid 3, Link. Biomechanics and the Cyberhuman, Link. It's Smart to be a Dummy, Link. Stiff, The Curious Lives of Human Cadavers, by Mary Roach. ISBN 0393-050939. King Al, Viano, D.C. Miseries N, States J.D. Humanitarian Benefits of Cadaver Research on Injury Prevention Journal of Trauma, Injury, Infection, and Critical Care 1995 Volume 38 Pages 564 through 569 This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl dot html